Question number one says, what should be the next step in a child aged six months presenting with severe dehydration and weak pulse and whose BP is not recordable after regular attempts along with failure in gaining IV excess? Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Question number one says, what should be the next step in a child aged six months presenting with severe dehydration and weak pulse and whose BP is not recordable after regular attempts along with failure in gaining IV excess? So we have a six month old child, the child is having features of shock, there is unrecordable BP and you obviously need to give fluids in the child but you cannot obtain IV access. A very frequently encountered phenomena, particularly if you are working in a critical case setting. What you are next going to do? What is the next step? Let us look at, have a look at the options. First is keep trying for IV access. Uh, frankly speaking, this is what sometimes people do, uh, especially young residents who are not very well versed with uh, what next is to be done. Uh, but you cannot keep indefinitely trying for IV access. It is a shock-like thing. BP is unrecordable. You urgently need to obtain IV access. So A cannot be the answer obviously. Option B is jugular vein catheterization should be urgently performed. Option C is intraosseous route should be considered. And fourth is emergency venesection should be performed. Now this is uh, the answer must be clear to you by now. Whenever you have a child coming to you with shock, appropriate fluid resuscitation is the first and the most important thing to do in this child. If fluid resuscitation is to be given, obviously you will need a venous access. Many times what will happen is the veins will be totally collapsed and you cannot obtain IV access. The second best route in such a scenario will be intraosseous access. Intraosseous access also called as the osseous route and that should be urgently performed. The important thing to understand is that anything which can be given through intravenous route, that can be given safely through the intraosseous route as well. You want to give blood transfusion, you can give through IU route. You want to give drugs, you can give it through IU route. You want to give even uh, fluids to the child or IV antibiotics to the child. That also can be given through the intraosseous access. So the answer to this question is B. So the answer to this question is C, that is intraosseous route should be considered. What are the key important points about intraosseous route taken from multiple sources that you need to remember? First thing is intraosseous access, where exactly you place. Intraosseous uh, route is given through specialized needles. They are wide bore needles which are placed about 1 to 2 centimeters below the tibial tuberosity. So if you palpate from above, this is the tibial tuberosity which has been shown. So it will be somewhere over here. You can palpate tibial tuberosity and about 1 to 2 centimeters downstream below that, you will put a intraosseous needle. Take, make sure that you do not damage the epiphyseal growth plate. Epiphyseal growth plate is present at the level or just above the tibial tuberosity. So that is why it is always placed 1 to 2 cm below the tibial tuberosity. That is the side where it is placed. So the question arises, once you inject any drug or any fluid into it, from where is it absorbed? It is absorbed through the medullary venous plexus or medullary sinusoids. So what are the key points that you should know? First thing, according to Nelson, intraosseous excess should be obtained if no IV access is possible in within one minute during cardiac arrest. As far as uh, other conditions like shock and uh, uh, poisonings, those kind of situations are mentioned. Uh, no specific time frame has been given, but usually uh, during uh, cardiac arrest, the guidelines are very clear. The maximum time allowed for IV access is one minute. If you can't put uh, IV access, then intraosseous access route should be considered. Secondly, what is the best route? What is the best site? It is anterior proximal part of tibia. What is the part of tibia? It will be one to two centimeters below the tibial tuberosity. This is the best site. From where does the absorption happen? The site of absorption for most of the drugs which are given through intraosseous access is uh, through the medullary venous plexus, also called as medullary sinusoids. 
or medullary sinusoidal nexus. And interosseous excess sometimes may not always be possible. You may need, uh, if the cortex is very thick, particularly in older children, you may need to do a bit of drilling also. And if that is still not feasible, then the third best route in these patients will be putting an endotracheal tube and giving the drug through endotracheal route. This is more commonly employed for select amount of drugs through endotracheal route. You cannot give fluids, you cannot give blood transfusion. So for giving fluids and blood transfusion, the only two possible routes for you are intraosseous access and intravenous access, right? This is regarding an uh, emergency situation that we are talking about. Obviously, once the patient has been stabilized and there is no CPR currently going on, obviously then you can you will go in for other other routes like uh, uh, central venous catheterization or you will consider put, doing a venous section in older children, etc. They are going to take time. They are not emergency resuscitative measures which are employed in children.